I'm no prophet. My job is making windows where there were once walls. This quote perfectly describes Michel Foucault's purpose in life. He was an influential modern French philosopher who wanted to teach people about forgotten ideas from the past and expose false beliefs about current ones. Foucault believed that we should look at how things were done before and compare them to how they're done now. As we will see, that's exactly what he did. Foucault didn't create clear theories, definitions, or a solid philosophical foundation. He often avoided doing so. Instead, he criticized existing theories, traditions, and concepts without making his own. He wanted to reveal the hidden truth set in our society. Foucault wasn't a traditional philosopher. His work in the humanities and social sciences often challenged traditional thinking. He believed that society is controlled by power relationships. Unlike others, he thought philosophy should expose these power structures to change who holds control over individuals. This belief led him to spend most of his career criticizing the power dynamics of the modern capitalist state. As a result, he soon became known as a controversial thinker. For many intellectuals, both in the past and today, his name is synonymous with the concept of power, and for good reasons too. But before exploring why that is, it's essential to first observe Foucault's early life, along with his struggles and influences. Michel Foucault was born on October 15, 1926, in Poitiers, France. He grew up in a wealthy family with his father being a well-known surgeon. As Foucault became older, his family hoped he would follow in their footsteps and become a doctor himself. Foucault was always seen as a brilliant student. With his upper-class education, he had many career options, but as we will discover, he would be met with other struggles. In 1946, at the age of 20, Foucault entered the École Normale Supérieure, or ENS, in Paris. He studied psychology and philosophy, briefly embraced communism, and then abandoned it. However, his life was not easy. Throughout his youth and into his 20s, Michel often attempted to harm himself and even had thoughts of suicide. At university, his room reflected his troubled state of mind, with pictures of torture by Francisco de Goya on the walls. Due to his distress, his father sent him to see Jean Delay, France's most famous psychiatrist of his time. The doctor found that much of Michel's distress came from having to hide his homosexuality, or the fact he was gay. Foucault also had an interest in extreme sadomasochism, which society at the time would disapprove and judge harshly. After teaching at the University of Leo, Foucault spent five years traveling through Germany, Sweden, and Poland, looking for a place where his sexuality would be more accepted. In 1960, Foucault returned to France, joined the underground gay scene, and fell in love with a drug dealer, later taking up with a transvestite. During this period, he taught philosophy and psychology at the University of clermont ferrin Ten years later, he was elected to the prestigious College de France. However, by the late 1970s, he left teaching to travel the world. Eventually, he died of AIDS, marking his death on June 25, 1984, in Paris, France. However, there is still one major moment for Foucault that we have yet to discuss. A crucial moment in his life came at the age of 27, when he discovered the works of Nietzsche. This had a profound impact on him and shaped his thinking. It was an intellectual liberation for him. In his own words, he said, Nietzsche was a revelation to me. I felt that there was someone quite different from what I had been taught. I read him with great passion and broke with my life. Left my job in the asylum. Left France. I had the feeling I had been trapped. This enlightenment prepared him to publish his first major work, Madness and Civilization, in 1961. This brings us to the next section of his philosophy, a very intriguing part of it. The book Madness and Civilization had many important points, but one stands out the most, perhaps because of the controversy it brings. Foucault used the term madness to refer to individuals with mental illnesses. Today, we think we treat people with mental illnesses more humanely than in the past. We think we're more compassionate, but Foucault disagreed. He thought this idea was false, and in some ways, the opposite was true. Looking back to the Renaissance, Foucault believed that mad people were treated differently, but often in a better way. In the past, those considered mad were sometimes seen as having unique insights or even wisdom. They were not seen as crazy, but different. And that difference was not always negative. They felt more similar to the average person than they do 
Now, today, Foucault argued, our actions don't match our words. We say people with mental illnesses are not insane and are just like us, but we still put them in mental hospitals, give them medications, and take away their autonomy. Because of this, we make them feel crazy and inferior. Foucault believed that in an ironic way, by trying to make individuals with mental illnesses seem identical to us, we end up making them feel both insane and different. We see them as people to cure, rather than just tolerate for being different. This was one way Foucault challenged traditional beliefs and practices, but his ideas only get more controversial and interesting from here. In 1975, Foucault published Discipline and Punish, The Birth of the Prison. In this book, he challenges common beliefs about modern prisons and punishment. Like in his work Madness and Civilization, this time focusing on prisons, Foucault tried to uncover how our treatment of criminals has changed over time. Many people believe that today's prisons are more humane than in the past, especially compared to times when public hangings were common. While this seems true, Foucault thought that the reason for this change wasn't just humanitarian concerns. Instead, he believed the focus shifted from punishing the body to controlling the mind. Foucault argued that power seems kinder now, but isn't. In the past, power was openly harsh and encouraged rebellion. Punishment used to be public, allowing people to see and react to it. Today, it happens behind closed doors, with no opportunity for public protest or defense of potentially innocent people. Some might say, well, I'd rather be in prison than hung in public, but Foucault wanted us to rethink this. He argued that moving from public executions to private imprisonment isn't necessarily progress. Instead, it represents a more sneaky form of control. Yes, public executions were brutal, but visible. People could see the punishment, which allowed for public discussion. Modern prisons are hidden from the public eye, making the state's power less obvious, but more widespread. The shift to reforming the mind means control is internalized. Prisoners are under constant surveillance and discipline, which subtly shapes their behavior in lasting ways. Foucault believed that this constant surveillance isn't to scare prisoners from escaping, but to make them feel as they must correct themselves. He argued that the humanitarian aspect of modern prisons is misleading and contains deeper, more intrusive forms of power. Foucault also noted that during executions, the convict's body could sometimes draw sympathy and the executioner could be the one feeling shame. Interestingly, Foucault observed that many new forms of control used in prisons are also found in schools, hospitals, and military barracks. He said, schools serve the same function as prisons and mental institutions to define, classify, control, and exploit people. This idea is true to some extent. Schools monitor grades, attendance, and behavior, using suspension as a threat, while military barracks constantly watch and impose strict routines on soldiers. So yes, institutions like school do control and discipline people. They use different methods to ensure everyone follows the rules, proving Foucault's point about how power and discipline are everywhere in society. Now that we've examined some of Foucault's major works, we can see his most significant idea, arguably more important than anything we've discussed so far, the concept of power. Foucault refused to create a strict, unchanging theory about power, but that doesn't mean he didn't give any insights about it. Foucault believed power and knowledge are deeply connected. You can't have one without the other. Power uses knowledge to control people, and knowledge uses power to shape how people act and think. He wanted to show how power and knowledge work together to shape who we are and how we see ourselves. Foucault said that power is everywhere and comes from everywhere, not just from a single source or authority. Power, for him, isn't only about controlling people, but also about creating behaviors, attitudes, and beliefs. He introduced the idea of power knowledge, showing how what we accept as truth is heavily influenced by power structures. For example, institutions like prisons use knowledge to control people. They categorize, monitor, and discipline individuals affecting how these people see themselves and their role in society. He saw discipline as a form of power that works in a subtle way. Instead of using force, it changes people's beliefs about what is normal, creating obedient individuals. He also noted that power works through discourse, or how we talk about and understand things. Discourses shape what we can know and who is recognized as knowledgeable. Thus, power and knowledge constantly interact to shape our reality and identities. Besides his ideas on power and knowledge, there is one major lesson from Foucault's life and philosophy that we can learn. 
That is, to look back at history, compare it to the present, and learn from it to live better lives. Foucault believed that we should examine how modern concepts and ideas work, then understand how they were seen or would have been seen in the past. This approach can be applied to many areas, such as social media, education, and more. Ultimately, some philosophers and thinkers dislike Foucault's work, while many others admire it, including the well-known Jean-Paul Sartre. Like Nietzsche, whom Foucault greatly admired, he constantly questioned traditional societal beliefs to uncover the truth behind them. Even though Foucault didn't provide clear theories or definitions, his contributions were significant in other ways. He provided deep insights and challenged us to question the world we live in. If you have enjoyed this video, a subscribe would be very helpful. As always, thank you for watching.